What's going on YouTubers? Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be checking out Imaginary Mart's Hulk Buster. Now I bought this off someone that was selling it off Sideshow Freaks uh, forums. Uh, they actually drove it to my house and helped me set it up here. It, you know, I took the boxes out upstairs and carried it piece by piece downstairs because it actually does include uh, five total arms. And then I carried the body down, put it on the base, and then, you know, right there, and then we put it together onto my actual garage shelving. So luckily it fits. It is a tight fit. As you can see, I can't even really see the top of the shoulder, which is fine, it's just the shoulder. The face is the most important part. Uh, but it is a huge piece. It's very, very big. Uh, so we're gonna, you know, go over this piece, compare it and review it and see what I think. So first let's start with assembly. So the way this goes in, you have this like 50 pound Hulk buster body with no arms and head that goes in via three pegs onto the base. And if you don't get it accurate, you could break it. And it's hard to see it as well. So when I was putting it in, I was carrying it while the guy guided it into its thing. And there's not really, there's only one like peg. Uh, like the electricity peg and then two tiny little pegs and then it really just rests on that base it doesn't have like a huge squared peg so i'm not really happy per se on how that goes into the base getting the head on was also quite difficult uh the way imaginary marks did it was just very difficult it took me like 20 tries to get it in now the arms they go in perfectly fine uh these little pins they go in so the arms go in great i did notice when i put that front arm in the base and the whole figure tilted forward you know a tiny like centimeter so you know the weight balance brought it forward i don't think it's going to tip or anything like that but in general i would probably put the construction like a three out of five or two out of five i wasn't totally happy with how it went together and it feels like it is a little bit wobbly. Like if you were to push it, push it, you know, it would fall over easier than like, let's say that Hulk statue would, for example. The base I believe is made out of fiberglass. So it's not super, super heavy. And I feel like it should be heavier. I feel like that should be extremely heavy to support Hulk a Buster. So uh, the actual parts, uh, like the arms and the body are very hefty and weighty. The base I just feel could be a little bit weightier. So I'm basically going to talk about all the negatives first. So the the way it goes together, putting the head in, the base in, sucks. The base is decent. It's just like a rock, rocky road. Uh, you know, a road that's been ground up with dirt. And it's a, it's a nice looking base. You know, it's uh, probably better than my other Hulkbuster base. That one over there. That one's also like a road with like a weird wall. You can see the size comparison like that versus this beast. This one's definitely a lot bigger. I can't move that one really. It's just so, they're so heavy, but I can at least, you know, like show you an arm comparison next to the one six version. Uh, I, I think that one six, I mean, they're both so big, but let's check out this base. So I do like the base, the way the roads being destroyed because you know, I was just watching the fight on my phone. It's definitely destroyed. So it looks like a real road that's just been broken up, dirt, rocks everywhere. So I do like the base. I think it probably could be improved, maybe adding an underbase and a sign that says Hulkbuster and the mark, whatever mark this is, I forget. But you know me, I like the underbases. You know, like this underbase is awesome with this, uh, you know, Hulk thing that you can put here. So that's quite cool. So I can, you know, put that like that. It's just really cool looking. So I wish he had something similar like that where this was on top of another underbase. Now let's look at the actual Hulkbuster body. So my seller, he's probably never dusted once in his life because when I dusted this, literally a coat of dust just flew off. It was unbelievably dusty. I'm like, oh my goodness. So, yeah, folks, please dust your statues. These are expensive collectibles. Uh, but, you know, basically it's red, gold, silver, and this has a very battle-damaged look to it. 
The legs are huge. The feet, look at that, bigger than my hand. This one definitely has a ton of battle damage, just like my other Hulkbuster does actually, where there's tons of scratches and uh, almost like burn marks, uh, which I personally like. I like a battle damage look for Iron Man's and costumes in general. I think it just looks great. But there is the portrait. As you can see, tons of wear and tear and battle damage. Uh, overall, the paint job does look really good. It's very accurate to the movie, to Hulkbuster's costume. I, you know, paused a screenshot and was looking at the costume. I think this is very accurate. Uh, the gold is definitely a different colored gold than that one. That one's almost like a mustardy gold. Uh, you know, like a mustard gold, where this one is more of just like a gold gold, which I like them both. Although I would say this is probably more accurate than my 1.6 version. One six is still incredibly good. Uh, this does have a light up feature. Uh, of course, the cable my seller brought was broken, so it didn't light up until I used a different cable. But check out the light up. So it does have a, more or less a detailed arc reactor right there. And then light up in the eyes, in the hands. I do like the hand house, like an actual detailed like arc reactor. Same with the legs. You know, each leg has multiple light-ups, actually. And there's also multiple light-ups on the back of this statue as well, right here. And then some on the back of the legs. So, in total, I think it has, like, 16 lights. So, and these lights are blue, uh, not white like your traditional Iron Man statue. But I believe blue is more accurate. Because I know on the prototype it was white. On my Hulkbuster 1.6 right here, it is white. That one is battery operated where this is not. This is via the USB cable, the cable connector, as you see. Uh, the problem with the batteries, once the battery dies, you have to take this uh, statue apart to remove the batteries and it's such a pain in the butt. So overall, paint and sculpt, I think is fantastic. It definitely is extremely good. You know, I'm just trying to compare this. I really probably should just bring my 1.6 and place it next to it. Let me do that. Alrighty, folks, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the Hulk Buster 1.6 by Iron Studios next to Imaginary Marts. Keep in mind that's about two inches taller. But I do think it looks... Uh, you know, the one fourth is obviously superior, uh, having them side by side. I think the one fourth has more detail. There is some things I like about the one six. You know, like for example, look at the feet difference. This one has a ton of weathering on the feet, but that one just has the whole scratches and burn marks. I don't know if that's necessarily a good or a bad thing on the one six or one fourth. Just preference, they both look good. I think I prefer the gold tone on this better than the mustard look. This has detailed arc reactors, where this one's just white. Uh, for example, look at the chest and the hand. Uh, just white, where this one is actually like detailed. I still think this one six is absolutely amazing. Don't get me wrong, but the one fourth is king. Now I know uh, Queen Studios has also come out with a Hulk Buster. And I'm sure some of you might question why get this one, why not wait for Queen? Now Queen showed a uh, sort of concept where it was just a very basic museum pose and it had a very large base. So the reasons I went with this one. One, action pose with tons of switch outs. Uh, I am a much bigger fan of action pose, especially since as you see, I'm pairing it with an action-posed Hulk, and I just think they pair better together, having an action-posed Hulk and an action-posed Hulk Buster versus a museum style. And I know the museum one would not fit in here because of that monster base. It'd have to go top shelf. Uh, so, and also, this is available now. I don't have to wait two years, and this is definitely going to be cheaper. I paid $2,000 cash for this, where the Queen will probably run... 2500 plus shipping another seven or 800 so it's going to be a three thousand dollar purchase so thousand dollars more wait two years for a museum pose no thanks this already looks very movie accurate the details fantastic the paint job's fantastic i do love the pose options and it has incredible
incredible presence. That's one thing about this piece that really, you know, just look at the next tether one force. It's a beast. It's huge, thick, girthy, looks awesome. Very, very big presence. I can imagine how much more presence it'd have if it was like top shelf. Uh, it's very tempting to put it top shelf, but the only way I'd do that is that and Hulk bust and then do the other three down low. But I really want to do Hulk buster versus Hulk uh, like this. So I'll probably just keep it just like this, to be honest. I thought about having them face each other like I do my 1-6, but I won't do that. Uh, but he does come with a plethora of switch outs, and I haven't tested those yet. So he's currently in what's uh, considered, I guess, a defensive mode. Uh, so he's back arm up, almost like, it almost looks like it's a punching uh, arm as well. Like this one's defensive, this one's punching. Uh, but let's check out some of these switch outs because he has three of these arms. And you can just see, you know, I can show you guys a size comparison. You know, just look how big that is. I was like, look at the size difference. Uh, one fourth to one six. You can see, you know, like the paint difference. Look at the shoulder pads. So, yeah. Tons of detail. These are very heavy pieces. So, like, just that one six weighs probably 60 pounds. The one fourth probably weighs uh, maybe 85 pounds. So, it's very, very heavy. Uh, let's put uh, one six back. Check out some of these uh, switch outs. All right, so we switched out just that back arm, and that's a more upwards arm instead of like the cocked punch. It also could be viewed as a punch in the back. Uh, it does make it wider, uh, so you will want additional width space if you're gonna do that arm. And then we switched out this arm, with it, which is more of a front forward punching arm. So I think this fits better than having like that arm with there. I think these two are meant to go together as more of like an attacking arms. I think this one would also go great with that one instead of that one. So definitely a cool option, you know, to have him punching forward. And then we also got this arm, which was an additional arm they also made. So let's check out that. Alrighty, and then here is this arm. Uh, now I'm not 100% happy with how this peg arm went in. It didn't go as smooth as the other ones. Like you can actually see the peg. So I'm not a fan of that. I feel like it could probably fall out easy, but I do like the look of this. I think this is sick looking. You know, this is the scene where he did all those millions of punches in his face into the ground. So it's very, very cool. It also does give it quite a bit of depth because of that. So this is probably the pose that makes it have the most presence because the width and the depth are now to an extreme. So, it is cool, but I don't like how much this sticks out the shelf. So I don't know if I'll ever display this. Plus I'm not a fan of how that went in. So I probably won't display this one often. Alrighty, then here's really one of the other choices to do is that arm in the sort of punching defensive mode and then the punching forward. I do like this look. I think in general, I prefer that arm versus that arm. That one has a little bit more presence and it's still cool. But for some reason, I like that arm uh, cocked back up like that. I don't know. That's the thing. There's so many switch out options. It's hard to choose which one's your favorite. They're all really cool looking though. So it's definitely nice to have switch outs because that Hulkbuster, the only switch out is you can remove that like part of the base that he's like knocking the wall over. This one, you have all these different arms, and these arms are massive. They're gonna be a pain in my butt to store, because these are huge. But I, uh, so, let's give some uh, final thoughts then on what we think of this piece. So, it's definitely incredibly impressive. I think the paint and sculpt is awesome. I, I think the details overall fantastic. You know, this is like a three-year-old or four-year-old piece. So it still holds up as an absolutely fantastic looking piece, no doubt. So very, very cool. I, I mean, there's definitely some things I would change in regards to construction, you know, how it's put together, uh, a few things on the base, like adding an under base, making the base heavier. 
Uh, Hulk Buster weight is perfectly fine. These arms are very heavy. There is a, quite a strong magnet on each of them, but I would make the base heavier and give it an underbase. Otherwise, it's an absolutely fantastic piece and definitely, you know, another grail added to the collection. Now, just the sheer size is what makes this so impressive. And it does go absolutely fantastic paired with this one fourth Hulk by uh, Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, they look perfectly scaled together. Uh, they're both action posed. Uh, the bases are obviously a bit different color, but they they work, you know, because they're both roads more or less. His is just broken and you can see the dirt underneath. Uh, but I think they look absolutely fantastic together. Uh, in a perfect world, I'd love to have Hulk right here in front uh, so they're actually facing each other, similar to the diorama. But this definitely works. It's kind of funny how I got Hulkbuster, Hulk, and Vision right here and right there. Now, I'm probably going to end up selling this set right here uh, to fund future Queen Studio uh, products, uh, you know, like another bust in one fourth. I just don't need two of the exact same item if I have it in different scales. Uh, so I think ultimately, you know, I'm not going to sell my Avengers 1 diorama or Endgame. But I can definitely see myself uh, selling this set. Uh, it's not something I have to do like right now, but uh, you know, for space concerns, whenever a future queen bust comes out, like I want to do a bust one fourth right there, I think uh, I would want that space for that instead of an exact same scene uh, where ultimately these two are superior than the Iron Studios. I mean, it's bigger, so it should be, but Hulk's better than that Hulk. And Hulk Buster is better than that Hulk Buster. Uh, not to say these aren't fantastic as for a 1.6, they absolutely are amazing. But I would sell those. So if anyone is interested, uh, message me. I'd sell them for uh, probably 2,000 plus shipping for the set. Uh, but overall, this Hulk Buster is absolutely fantastic. It's limited to 500 worldwide. Uh, should you hunt this down or wait for Queen, it depends on your situation, your space, and funds. Like I said, Queen's going to probably be $3,000. It's going to be bigger. It'll probably have a shinier paint job, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's better because this is very accurate to the movie. You know, just like uh, like these uh, Iron Mans by Iron Studios are not 100% accurate to the movie, but I love their paint job. And this one definitely is very, very good and definitely a keeper in my book. So I'm very happy I finally got it. So I was really wanting this for my Age of Ultron display, as you can see. You know, I got all the important characters, so I'm loving it. Anyways, folks, let me know your thoughts and comments below, suggestions, tips, and whatnot. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. Folks, before I end the video, I wanted to ask your opinion on what you think of this, doing the Hulk next to his bust and Ultron next to Hulk Buster. My buddy says to keep it this way so you can have the bust next to one fourth, the two robots underneath, and those two next to each other because they also have matching bases because uh, they are part of like a line. So what do you think of this? I think I might just keep it like this. Uh, I think uh, they all look fantastic like this as well. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. See you guys next time.